Football Focus put together a rankings of the rookie classes. You see Bengals with Joe Burrow ranked number one, Indianapolis, Jonathan Taylor there, ranked two, Tampa Bay ranked three, the Chiefs, Washington, Pittsburgh eighth, the Browns way down at 19, and the Ravens ranked 26. Here's the rationale uh, why Pro Football Focus had the Browns ranked so low. Cleveland had four picks day one and two. None of the players selected made a positive impact. Second-round pick Grant Elpit missed the entire campaign with a torn Achilles. The other three, offensive tackle Jedrick Wills, defensive end Jordan Elliott, linebacker Jacob Phillips, all generated negative pro football focus wars, which is wins above replacement. Now, how the top pick fared? They said entering his rookie campaign, Willis expected to bring a lot of value to the table with his run blocking in Kevin Stefanski's wide zone attack. While he suffered through a learning curve, it, when it came to true pass sets, the opposite occurred. So Willis ranked 15th among left tackles in pass blocking, according to Pro Football Focus, and fifth to last in run blocking. Let's bring back uh, Dan Lobby into this conversation. Dan, um, I, I get where they're going. The thing to remember about Jedrick Wills is he flipped sides, which uh, that's never easy to do it. And it it has to do with you have to lead with a different arm, you have to lead with a different let. You know, you're you're changing your entire power structure and the way you do things. And he didn't have a training camp. I thought he played pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did too. I, it's hard for me to look at what Jedrick Wills did this year and say that he didn't have a positive impact on this football team. To me, I you know I understand that. You know, they have their grading system, and I'm not going to sit here and say that Jedrick Wills was perfect, or I I watched every Jedrick Wills snap and, and broke down what he did and didn't do right, and he certainly had his growing pains. But to me, I think it's impossible to look at what Jedrick Wills did for this line, stabilizing the left tackle position, like you said, doing it moving from the right side to the left side with, no, with barely any training camp, no offseason. Jedrick Wills was really important. Was he as important as Jack Conklin or Wyatt Teller or Joel Batonio? Probably not, but if you found your left term, your long term left tackle, that's a home run of a pick to me. So, you know, it's hard for me to say he didn't have a positive impact. And even in the run game, where maybe he wasn't as good, go back and watch some of those Nick Chubb cutbacks. Jedrick Wills had a big block on a lot of those. And the flip side of it is he's only going to get better once he gets used to setting, you know, to, to, to driving the way he needs to drive on the opposite side. I mean, that's something that repetition will definitely helped. The other thing, you know, they did pretty well late in the draft. Harrison Bryant, Nick Harris, before he got hurt, showed like he was he was capable when they plugged him in. And then the guy we talked about, Donovan Peoples-Jones, did very well for a late pick. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I think for all of those guys, we don't exactly know what they're going to be. You know, Donovan Peoples-Jones was probably the best of that group. He was the one who was really contributing the most down the stretch. Nick Harris, we didn't see a lot of him. He got called on uh, in back-to-back -back games uh, against the Giants and Jets, had to come in off the bench, and it seemed like he played pretty well against the Giants, didn't play quite as well against the Jets. So, you know, we don't know exactly what he is. And Harrison Bryant, tight end is really difficult for a rookie. And I think we saw that with Bryant. He came out and he started really hot, had a great game against Cincinnati uh, when the Browns won that shootout against Joe Burrow and company. Then he started to struggle a little bit, holding on to the football, had some fumbles. And those are things that your your quarterback loses confidence a little bit. But I'm still pretty high on what Harrison Bryant can be in this offense, especially considering that he's a fourth round pick. What about Phillips? That's the guy. There were there were times where it was like, boy, this, we really got something. And then there were other times, and it's like, huh, that just didn't look <laughs> right. Yeah, I think I think that sums up Jacob Phillips pretty well, and he might be the key to this draft class. Not the key to this draft class. Look, it's going to be about Jedrick Wills and Grant Delpit, but Jacob Phillips can take this draft class and make it really good. If you find a guy that can develop in his second year and his third year into a reliable starting linebacker for you. And this is sort of weird territory, I think, for Browns fans because they're so used to draft picks coming in, having the spotlight on them. They're the key to everything in a team's success. It's not weird for guys to maybe take a little time to develop for a third round pick like Jacob Phillips to take a couple years to develop or a guy like Jordan Elliott. Uh, you know, we didn't hear his name a lot this year, but he might be an important guy on the inside next year. So, you know, this is really kind of the embodiment of it takes three years to judge a draft class because outside of a guy like Jedrick Wills and what Grant Delpit would have been asked to do, 
these guys weren't just thrown into the fire right away and, and you know they were stars for this football team they're able to kind of bring these guys along and develop them you know it's kind of interesting because you always hear you know well the Steelers draft so well or the Ravens draft so well it's because they have the same system and they know the guys that will work in that system uh, you know no player is perfect but you draft guys that their deficiencies are hidden by what you ask them to do. And I think Kevin Stefanski and Andrew Barry have a good idea of what their system is going to be, which should mean good things for the draft. Yeah, it's huge. It's huge to know how a guy is going to fit into what you're going to do instead of just picking a guy because he's at the top of your board or, or whatever. You know, okay, here's how Harrison Bryant is going to look in this offense. Here's how Jedrick Wills is going to look. We talk about Joe Wood's defense, how he didn't have all the bodies. But again, with Grant Delpit, he said it right after Delpit got hurt. He was going to be important for, because of his versatility. So that gives us an idea of what Joe Wood's defense will look like when it's whole. They know the systems. They know how to fit guys into the systems. And you're right. The Steelers draft well because they know how guys fit. They know how Devin Bush looks in that offense or in that defense when they trade up to get him at number 10 overall. And if the Browns are aggressive, if they sit back and wait for the draft to come to them, however it plays out, you know that they're going to have a vision for how a player fits specifically into their offense or defense. Well, the other thing is, is everybody makes a big deal about the Steelers developing wide receivers. They know what they're looking for in the prototypical Steelers wide receiver. It's been the same thing for a number of years. They, you know, they go out and, okay, this guy checks the box. Here's our next wide receiver. And, and you can't do that when you're constantly flipping front offices, you're constantly flipping coaches and you know coordinators, and you don't know what your system looks like. You need to know what a safety looks like in your defense. You need to know, do linebackers matter in this defense? What, what do your two ends look like? What do your, like you mentioned with the Steelers, what do your receivers look like? You know you're, you know you're running this zone blocking scheme, so how does this offensive lineman fit within that scheme? And we saw it in free agency. We saw it in the draft. The Browns had a clear vision on how everybody kind of fit together. And it will be interesting to see if they can flip sides of the ball and do that with the defense this year. 